In 1998, Juanita Bynum's sermon, No More Sheets, took the Black American Christian world by storm. At the height of the purity culture movement and mainstream Protestantism, Bynum's vulnerability and bluntness was fine-tuned for her largely Black female audience. Let's talk about Juanita Bynum, the Church of God in Christ, women in ministry, and the impact of No More Sheets. But first, make sure you like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the latest video. Juanita Bynum was born on January 16, 1959, and was raised in Chicago, Illinois. Bynum's family, which included her mother, father, and four siblings, were members of the Church of God in Christ, commonly referred to as Kojic. Bynum also attended a Kojic High School in Mississippi. After her high school graduation, Bynum began preaching at churches and revivals. She eventually moved to Michigan, where she would attend and preach at Unity Temple Kojic, founded by Bishop William Nichols. By 1996, Juanita Bynum was living in New York. She had been divorced, laid off from her job as a flight attendant, and at one point forced to depend on public assistance. While preaching at her church in New York, she met a man who would change her life forever, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Jakes invited Bynum to attend his 1996 Singles Conference in Dallas, Texas. By 1998, Bynum was named the keynote speaker of the conference. In front of a crowd of 17,000 people who were mostly black women, Juanita Bynum gave a sermon entitled No More Sheets, which garnered her a standing ovation and catapulted her into Christian stardom. I'm just so sold out for Jesus that don't nothing bother me. I'm just all in the anointing and I don't never get frustrated. I don't never want to fall and have some sex. I don't never want to do nothing wrong. But the devil is a liar. Come on here, somebody. Every day of my life, I'm struggling to Here are three takeaways from No More Sheets. Juanita's use of her past. Personal experiences with God are the foundation of the Kojic denomination. Kojic's two founders, Bishop Charles Harrison Mason Sr. and Charles Price Jones Sr. were inspired by the preaching and testimony of evangelist Amanda Berry Smith. Smith was born in Maryland to two enslaved parents. By her 30s and after losing multiple husbands and children, she was fully immersed in the Wesleyan Holiness Movement. The Wesleyan Holiness Movement taught the concept of entire sanctification, which means that a true Christian will experience a second work of grace, which frees them from their inborn sin nature. Evidence of entire sanctification includes being filled with the Holy Spirit, which allows the believer to speak in tongues and outward changes of dress and behavior. Smith would travel around the world testifying that she had experienced such a transformation. Charles Mason and Charles Jones built on these beliefs when they founded Kojic in 1897. In 1907, both men attended the legendary Azusa Street Revival in Los Angeles, California. The men were in attendance for several weeks, but the revival lasted almost 10 years. Attendees of the revival would remark that they were saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Juanita Bynum was raised in the Kojic denomination, so it's no surprise that her theology reflects the denomination's history. One of the things that made No More Sheets so powerful was that Juanita Bynum used her own life experiences as the basis for the sermon. During the sermon, she alludes to a few stories in the Bible, but doesn't have the audience open their Bibles to a specific book, chapter, or verse. Powerful stories like Bynum's may be inspirational, but they can also be dangerous. Bynum diminishes the importance of outward appearance and emphasizes the importance of a woman's character. However, she describes the ideal woman's character in the framework of harmful singleness theology. She blames singleness on promiscuity and soul ties. She further accuses women of being too financially irresponsible or inexperienced in domestic duties to have a husband. All that black brother is going out and he's getting all these white ladies. And hey, hey, what's wrong? We ain't good enough. No, we too needy. We ain't got nothing. Come on, y'all ain't saying nothing. I'm supposed to be a help meet. Come on here, somebody. When you get ready to get married, what are you bringing to the table, Miss Sister Thing? Besides eyeliner and lipstick, you ain't got no savings account. All of your credit cards is charged up. And now you want somebody to be a rescue engine, engine number nine, and sorrow in your life. And he got to come and wipe out all of your mess. The devil is a liar. God is calling you to accountability today. It's time, as a man said last night, get yourself together. It's interesting to note that you will hear many of the same points in the content created by the Black Manosphere today. 
Be sure to check out my video on singleness theology to learn more about how it affects Christian singles. While Juanita Bynum's experience allows the audience to feel that she understands their struggles, she ultimately convinces them to embrace a theology which may cause more harm. Consecration. The act of consecration and the concept of entire sanctification, which I mentioned earlier, are definitely connected. Consecration is the process of offering oneself to God as a living sacrifice. In No More Sheets, Juanita Bynum explains a process of cleansing oneself from the spiritual connections of previous sexual partners. Bynum's methods follow the idea that a sinless nature is possible once a person truly surrenders to God. Juanita Bynum is not claiming that black women are irredeemable or inferior beings, but these ideas have been common in the past and present. For example, Amanda Berry Smith had to be extremely careful about her clothing during her preaching work due to prevailing stereotypes about black women during her time. If black women dress too fancily, they may be accused of being uppity and could face harassment from white people who resented seeing wealthy, educated black people. If women didn't dress well enough or weren't covered enough, they faced being called uncivilized or facing sexual harassment, as many people believe black women were inherently more promiscuous. Holiness theology and culture create a refuge for women like Amanda Smith, a place to achieve respectability and humanity. Juanita Bynum follows this tradition. She repeatedly states that women will not be able to get married until they have removed all of these sheets from their past encounters, but also gives hope that full freedom is possible and maintainable based on her own experience. On the other hand, teachings like Bynum send black women through years of frenetic striving and self-improvement that may still leave them wanting. There is a sense of shame about engaging in normal human behaviors or feeling normal human emotions. There's no discussion of abuse, which black women are statistically likely to experience. Watch this, watch this, it's gonna help you. I went on a 40 day consecration and fast. And the whole time I was on the fast, didn't have no problems with the flesh. Speaking in tongues on high, glorifying God. And the devil said, you free. Y'all, I gotta tell my testimony. Thank you, Jesus. The devil ain't got no new tricks. Amen. He brought the same person around. Before I knew it, now this ain't none of y'all. Cause y'all too holy for this. You too righteous to do this. But I found myself right back in the sheets again. Freedom. Let me help you with something in the Lord said to me. He said, whatever it took you to get free, you're going to have to stay there to stay free. You can't consecrate five days and go back to watching mess on the TV. You can't consecrate for 10 days and go back to hanging around junk. But you got to make up in your mind. My problem is not like yours. I can't do what you do. I can't go where you go. You can call me deep if you want to. You can tell me I'm too holy, but I just want to be saved. I just want to be sanctified. I want to be free. I want to be washed. I want to be purged. I want to lift up holy hands. The theme of freedom is found throughout the history of the holiness movement. Before Juanita Bynum and before Amanda Berry Smith, there was Jarena Lee born in 1783 and Julia Foote born in 1823. Jarena Lee was a personal friend of Richard Allen, the founder of the African Methodist Episcopal Church or AME Church, and became the first female preacher in the organization. Julia Foote's ministry started shortly after Jarena Lee's. She preached in the United States and Canada and became the first ordained deacon in the AME Church. Both women opposed slavery and supported equal rights for black people, women, and black women. Both women proclaimed that they had received entire sanctification, just as Amanda Berry Smith would years after. I should mention that entire sanctification was a controversial teaching, not just because of theological disagreements, but because of its racial implications. Many of the news articles and denominational opposition to the Azusa Street Revival came from people who were horrified that the event was racially integrated. As people experienced the Holy Spirit at the revival, they could fall on each other, leading to interracial physical contact. These interactions were not sexual, but the very idea of the possibility of a white woman falling into the arms of a black man at a revival 
raised alarms for many. The opposite of entire sanctification was the idea that sanctification could not be achieved until after death. This more mainstream teaching was used to reinforce the idea of racial and gender segregation. People would teach that the alleged imperfections of women or non-white people simply couldn't be fully overcome in the physical life. In contrast, entire sanctification was a revolutionary call to end separation of salvation and sanctification, thereby ending racial and gender segregation. By claiming that sanctification was possible during life, these female ministers were claiming that there was no basis to discriminate within or outside the church. Clothes I don't want to wear, and that's why I don't. That's why I don't wear anything to, to show my shape or anything because I don't want nobody to choose me because I have a nice figure or I have nice legs. I want, I want somebody to see my heart. I want you to be able to look in my eyes and see the spirit of my soul and know that I'm a chosen vessel and I'm a queen. Oh, I wish I had somebody in there. I just couldn't take it anymore. And so I was willing to become poor. I was shaking roaches out of my clothes before I put them on, Bishop. I was, I was flying for the airlines and I was on the jump seat one day and looked down at my purse and a roach was coming out of my purse. And the girl next to me started laughing. And I kept hearing the Lord say, if you suffer for righteousness sake, I'm going to bless you. Unfortunately, I do not believe that holiness theology offers true freedom. It is true that black women are over-sexualized and feel pressured to meet expectations of sexual prowess at a young age. As a result, these women may find it difficult to feel love for who they are and not how they look or what they can do in the bedroom. But holiness theology and the principle of entire sanctification goes to the other extreme. The expectation that one needs to be entirely sanctified before they can be married or have freedom is an unrealistic expectation for any human being to meet. Sadly, Bynum suggests that a woman shouldn't have thoughts of past relationships and shouldn't continue to be approached by the wrong men. If a woman continues to experience these things, then she is not completely cleansed from all the sheets of her past. Bynum's version of entire sanctification can become a cycle of shame and guilt for black women simply because they are unable to marshal the inhuman ability to be perfect.